Welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Mrinmoy Pramanik. I teach Comparative Indian Language and Literature at the University of Calcutta. Today we will discuss a module from Reading New Literature in English. And the module is on New Literature in English and World, Lit World Literature. In this module, we will learn the areas of new literature in English and the literature produced from those areas in English language and the conceptualization of those literary text or literature in the um, sphere of world literature and how the notion of world literature uh, is changing with the emergence of new literature in English. Eminent philosopher, psychiatrist, revolutionary and a writer, Franz Fanon, wrote the given powerful lines in his book Black Skin, White Mask about his experience of racism when he was pointed out by a small child. I quote, Look, a Negro, the circle was drawing a bit tighter. I made no secret of my amusement. Mama, see the Negro. I am frightened, frightened, frightened. Now they were beginning to be afraid of me. I made up my mind to laugh myself to tears. But laughter had become impossible. Then, assailed at various points, the corporeal schema crumbled its place taken by a racial epidermal schema. In the train, it was no longer a question of being aware of my body in the third person, but in a triple person. In the train, I was given not one, but two, three places. On that day, completely dislocated, unable to be abroad with the other, the white man who unmercifully imprisoned me. I took myself far off from my own presence, far indeed, and made myself an object, Fanon wrote in 1986. The need of new literature in English originated from the bigotry which the people of the colonized countries had experienced by various European tyrant colonizers. The study of new English literature is concerned with colonial and post-colonial writing, which emerged in former British colonies, such as parts of Africa, Australia, Bangladesh, Canada, Caribbean countries, India, Malaysia, Malta, New Zealand, Pakistan, Singapore, island in the South Pacific and Sri Lanka. According to many theorists, the USA should also be included in the list, but owing to its state of independence, which was on long before other colonies, and its current position of power, American literature is not considered to be post-colonial. African American literature? however, is regarded as post-colonial because of its African and European cultural origins and because of its marginal status. Many new literature writers write in English and focus on common themes such as the struggle for independence, emigration, national identity, allegiance and childhood. Through the medium of English, writers from Africa and Asia today confront a prospectively global audience. In general, critics have not yet agreed upon an acknowledged and recognized definition of the term post-colonial. There is an ongoing debate concerning the terminology and what exactly post-colonialism means. L.A.K. Bohemar, 
for instance, believes that superficially most modern and contemporary literatures could be called colonial or post-colonial, owing to the conquest of Britain by the Roman Empire. She therefore proposes a narrower definition and focuses on literature written in English in the countries which formerly belonged to the British Empire. Ania Lumba states that post-colonialism is a relatively vague concept and Christian MacLeod claims that there is no definitive consensus on what technically constitutes post-coloniality. So post-coloniality is under so many questions that post-coloniality always deals with the text produced in colonial time. The epistemology of post-coloniality or post-colonialism is nothing but created or constructed with the reference of colonial text. Bill Ashcroft, Garant Griffiths and Helen Tiffin suggest that a lack of critical practice concerning the new literature is responsible for the inability of European theory to deal adequately with the complexities and varied and varied cultural provenance of post-colonial writing. They nonetheless believe that the term post-colonial is the best solution at the moment because, I quote, it points the way towards a possible study of the effects of colonialism. Even so, better terms may still emerge. In order to understand the concept of post-colonial literature, it is necessary to be familiar with colonialism, which is, according to Bohemar, associated with the expansion of the European nation-state in the 19th century. There is, however, no precise definition of the term colonial literature because it does not belong to the literary canon and because it is so heterogeneous. Bohemar argues that colonial literature is writing concerned with colonial perceptions and experience, mainly by metropolitans, but also by creoles and indigenous during colonial time and therefore includes literature, which is written from the imperialist point of view. Include, for example, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, and E.M. Foster's A Passage to India. In the late 18th century, Europe was regarded as the leading exemplum of scientific humanity, which was believed to be humanity in its most achieved form. The 19th century novel then introduced a world picture with Britain at the center. Therefore, colonies belong to the margin in the age of decolonization. New literature in English is considered as critical reflection of colonial experience. English is the platform through which a right could convey his or her feelings, experiences and nostalgia to the entire world. Authors look for a self-constituted identity and independence. In this respect, the use of language is a predominant issue in new English literature. The uses of English in penning down new literature implies the fusion of cultures because the meeting of two cultures and in particular the way in which an indigenous order has been usurped by alien and intrusive values is one of the dominant themes in post-colonial literature. Authors regard language as a medium of power, but instead of using standard English, they employ a national variety in order to reconstruct and deconstruct the English language. Therefore, 
post colonial writing abrogates the privileged centrality of english by using language to signify difference while employing a sameness which allows it to be understood a reason for this deconstruction process is the imperial powers control over the means of communication rather than the control over life and property authors try to express their difference and use writing as an instrument of power to establish a position against the imperialist because writing is one of the most important instrument of communication nonetheless not only language and the means of communication need to be changed but the inter system of cultural assumptions on which the text of english canon are based english studies deny the value of the peripheral the the imaginal the uncanonized ashcroft uh, said however suggest a reconsideration of the english canon which all too frequently still act as a touchstone of taste and value new english literature is writing at the margin and has similarities to contemporary european thought for example feminism post structuralism and even hypertext theory the most comprehensive collection can be obtained from alan lewis voice of the shuttle english literature minority literatures and voice of the shuttle english literature other literatures written in english compared to traditional english literature the new literature are unsuitably covered on the world wide web a uh, representative canon of post colonial literature cannot be obtained from the internet many contemporary works are still under copyright protection and are not published in freely accessible text archives at the time of writing only colonial and post colonial theory was sufficiently presented on the new medium world literature at a glance the term world literature itself derives from gates neologism world literature which was recorded by his personal secretary johan peter ekerman this word came up during a conversation one night over dinner i quote national literature is now rather an unmeaning term the epoch of world literature is at hand and everyone must strive to hasten its approach for the 200 years or so that followed this pronouncement critics have sought to tie down the idea of world literature what is it how is it different to national literature or simply just literature world literature if we try to understand the concept we must agree with this that there are many worlds many worlds and therefore many world literature the positionality or the position of the reader or the critic is very much significant to imagine his or her own world literature because the concept of world literature differs from one culture to another one country to another one language to another today the attempts to theorize world literature fall into two camps on the one side is a belief that world literature is simply the best literature that each nation has to offer and on the other side is a belief that world literature is not an object at all but rather a process for those who fall into the second camp as described here the problem with world literature as the best of national literature is that it makes it an impossibly large area of study given that many scholars struggle to keep up with a very limited area of specialization such as 
Irish literature, 1900 to 1920, they ask whether one can really ever claim to be an expert in world literature. Rather, it seems as though we must think of world literature as a process, a way of reading, not an object of study. Because the whole process of selection, the text for the nomination of world literature is not only difficult but impossible. And when we are claiming as the first argument of the definition of world literature that world literature will be the representative text from different nations, it means that nation will have a control to censor the text, to select the text. So um, automatically the state power will be involved to select the text as a nation's representative text. And this idea of national, best national literature as world literature is also problematic for the countries, those uh, are uh, multilingual like India, like Africa, like Latin America. So the representation is complex, problematic and huge. So we have to see world literature as a process. Process of what? World literature is not always about the literature of high merit or the best merit, but literature what can travel from one linguistic zone to another. Literature what can be adapted, adapted as a reference point to understand one's politics, culture and life in better way or to find the solidarity from other literary zones. While literature's origin, development and modern conceptions are presented and described, by passing on relevant information, the reader is given an overall understanding of world literature. One conclusion is that although scholars sometimes disagree, there is an aim and a possibility for an unanimous definition and approach of the discipline. Another conclusion is that assimilation of world literature can evoke respect and acceptance towards all people and all cultures due to its all-inclusive, humanistic and global essence. And that is uh, not only world literature, but when we are talking uh, about this, this comes under the age-old thought of universal literature. One finding from the analysis is that world literature is closely linked to globalization and other major changes in society. Because through the globalization, the whole market economy, global economy and the publishing industry, publishing industry changes and publishing industry, publishing industry changes its ideas of literature and its interest about literary zones. So new literature we always get with the changing, uh, with the changes of time and with the shifts of economy. Another finding is that the field is defined by what is written, how it is read and interpreted. It is also defined by what is included or excluded. There are some works that due to high quality or local appreciation belong in world literature sphere, but for various reasons do not. Further finding shows that contributions circulate in multiple directions, often crossing over culture, language and nation borders. World literature evolves and changes sometimes because of reader's choice and subjective value or disvalue of works which as a consequence form a discipline with variable characteristics. World literature is multi-temporal as it reaches across all time, present and past. It is multicultural as it embraces all cultures, but it is not multi-inclusive as 
scholars exclude some works from the field even after they have entered into circulation. This is for example global literature which has a cosmopolitan character in the sense that it belongs nowhere. It is found in airport terminals for example as travel guidebooks and in railway bookstores for instance as magazines, leaflets, information brochures and the Harley Quinn series are other examples of global literature which are not defined as world literature. Even by those scholars who advocate the all-inclusive policy, world literature circulates in multiple directions but not necessarily across nation's border. For example, in India, there are 22 principal literary languages. As works are translated and circulated within the country, they enter the world literature sphere without traveling abroad. However, many Indian works have crossed the border like the Mahabharata and the ancient Sanskrit poems allowing foreign readers to expand their cultural horizons. Reading world literature can be challenging as the author may assume prior knowledge of, prior knowledge of divinities or dynasties and knowledge of writers or works that readers have not heard of. Some literary forms like poetry or imaginative writing can also be perceived as difficult to value or as being odd. Not all world literature gains in translation static text in a non-literary or ordinary language. Like treaties or contracts should neither gain nor loss as the content is moved unaltered. A work's value, essence or authenticity may alter in translation. If it thereby gains something, it becomes a source foci within world literature. But if it loses, it will stay in its cultural, local or national context, even if being highly valued there. Within an ellipse, variable amounts of works actively circulate beyond their culture of origin as classics, masterpieces or windows on the world. Some of them are read and valued by many and attain a canonical status after being extensively shared. Society, groups or individual mix canonical and non-canonical works on an individual or collective basis. As a result, texts exist both alone and together, a distant approach, perhaps due to translation or lack of knowledge of the source culture, is a detached reading. Contemporary discussions about world literature mainly originate from the USA, where scholars suggest moving literary studies away from period, genre, nation or author towards a cultural perspective. This includes, for example, gender, race and ideology on a transnational level. Globalization has caused some, like Franco Moriti and Tam Roche, to propose replacing comparative literary studies with the discipline of world literature. Others like Weichi, Dimok and Spivak agree but want to use the epithet planetary literature which comprises non-globalized area studies. It is also meant to target notions of world, area, nation and culture. Damrosius has set out the most commonly used designation of world literature at the moment. I quote, I take world literature to encompass all literary works that circulate beyond their culture of origin, either in translation or in their original language. Thus for Tamrosh, world literature is not all the literature of all the world, but only that literature which crosses a border. Despite whatever history texts may have in their source culture, they do not exist in world literature until they have been read outside that culture. So, how do texts circulate beyond their source culture? In response to Damrosh, Harish Trivedi has warned against taking the global circulation of text for granted, where the scholar of world literature need pauses only a passive re responsive capacity and readiness to um, whatever is washed up 
टू आवर डोर स्टेप बाय द टाइड्स ऑफ ग्लोबल मार्केट फोर्सेस और द क्विकर्स ऑफ लिटरेरी ट्रांसमिशन एंड ट्रांसलेशन so in this module we talked about the new liter new literature in english and we talked separately about world literature and we tried to understand that with the with the changing notion of world literature that how new literature in english is important in world literature or world literature is uh, adapted as a method to include new literature in english in literature department or comparative literature department or world literature department the notion of world literature also is being changed with the development of new literature in different regions of the world thank you